King Tutankhamun was a young king whose mysterious story has been told for almost 100 years. It is buried under layers of history and time in the golden sands of ancient Egypt. Here are some of the weirdest but true facts about King Tut. From the expensive treasures that were found in his tomb to the stories that people told about curses and cosmic links. He was only a child when he became pharaoh. King Tutankhamun, who was just called King Tut, took the throne at the incredibly young age of nine. Because he was young and had little experience, important people like the Grand Vizier A and the General of the Armies Horemheb helped him make decisions. Even though he was young, King Tut was put in charge of a huge, complicated kingdom and had to make decisions that would have an impact on the people who lived under his rule. Even though his rule was short, it was full of important events, such as the return of religion after his father's revolutionary changes. The idea of a child king ruling over one of the most beautiful societies in history has always fascinated both historians and regular people. This is what makes King Tut so interesting. The finding of his tomb, which was full of valuable items, gave people a look into the life of a young king who was seen by his people as both a political leader and a god. He was only a child when he became pharaoh. Tutankhamun's death is still one of the most mysterious events in Egyptian history. He died when he was very young, between 18 and 19 years old. Historians and researchers have a lot of ideas about what caused his death. Early tests on his mummy showed that he had been hit in the head, which led to murder ideas. Later research, such as modern CT scans and DNA analysis, has led to a number of possibilities, such as a chariot accident or a mix of malaria and a bone disease that breaks down over time. With its smaller size and some unfinished designs, King Tut's tomb looked like it was put together quickly, which adds to the mystery. Some experts think that his sudden death sped up the funeral process. The mystery is made even more complicated by the fact that there are no records from the time of his death. This has led to many ideas, hypotheses, and even made-up stories. The mystery surrounding King Tut's death continues to interest both experts and fans, making him one of the most famous and mysterious pharaohs in ancient Egypt. He was probably inbred. King Tutankhamun's family tree shows an interesting and slightly disturbing part of royal life in ancient Egypt. Royal families often mated. King Tut's mummy has been used to study genetics, which has shown that his parents were probably brother and sister. In Egypt in the past, royal incest was popular because people thought it kept the pharaoh's sacred bloodline and divine nature alive. Such proof of inbreeding also shows how the Egyptian royal family generally lived and thought, showing that politics and religion often took priority over health. King Tut's inbreeding story is a stark reminder of the huge stresses and complicated relationships that shaped the lives of the most powerful people in ancient Egypt. It gives us a look into a world where keeping royal purity could make people weak and where family and power were deeply connected. He lived with a lot of health problems, People are very interested in and study King Tutankhamun's health, which shows that he was a young king who had many health problems. In modern studies of his mummy, signs of a clubfoot have been found. He would have needed a cane to walk because of this disease. Over 130 walking sticks, some of which were ornately decorated to show both their practical use and symbolic standing, were found in his tomb, which supports this conclusion. Genetic tests have also shown that he might have Kohler disease, a rare and painful condition that affects the bones in his foot. It's possible that these physical problems were caused by the royal family's habit of mixing with itself, which can cause genetic problems. Even with these problems, King Tut's reign was full of great accomplishments, and art and statues often show him as a strong and energetic leader. The difference between how he looked in pictures and how he really was adds another level of complexity to our understanding of this young king. It shows that behind the golden mask and royal clothes, is a weak person. His illnesses don't take away from his legacy. Instead, they make us more aware of and sympathetic to the pharaoh who ruled one of history's most important societies. His burial was suspiciously rushed. Many people are interested in the speed with which King Tutankhamun was buried, even though his tomb is famous for its beautiful treasures. In contrast to the large and carefully planned tombs of other pharaohs, King Tut's seems to have been put together quickly. Its small size and the fact that some of the items were unfinished or used before suggest that his death may have been sudden and out of the blue. Some Egyptologists think that the tomb was meant for someone else at first, but was changed to fit the young king after he died too soon. 
Due to the speed with which King Tut was buried, some of the things in the tomb may not look right or be right for him. The traditional careful preparations that went along with burying a king, which could take many years, are very different from this sense of urgency. King Tut's quick burial adds to the wonder of his already mysterious life and death, making people more interested in learning more. It shows that ancient Egypt was a rough place to live, with political unrest and strange events that could change even the most sacred and long-standing customs. He was buried in a solid gold sarcophagus. The golden coffin of King Tutankhamun is one of the most beautiful and amazing things from ancient Egypt. The coffin is made of 110 kilograms of pure gold and has a beautiful picture of the young pharaoh on it. It captures his face with amazing detail. In ancient Egyptian religion, gold was linked to the gods and eternity. The gold represents King Tut's divine position and the eternal nature of his rule. The skill used to make this masterpiece is the best of old Egyptian art, with intricate designs made of colored glass and precious stones. The coffin was one of three that were stacked inside each other. The golden coffin was the one on the inside, which protected and honored the mummified king even more. Howard Carter and his team were stunned when they first saw the golden coffin when they found the tomb in 1922. It still amazes tourists and researchers today. Not only does the golden coffin give us a physical link to a civilization that lived a long time ago, but it also shows how revered, wealthy, and advanced a society was by making such a lasting sign of majesty and power. He was the origin of the Pharaoh's curse. Howard Carter's finding of King Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922 shocked and excited people all over the world, but soon rumors of a deadly curse took the spotlight. People who tried to disturb the pharaoh's tomb were said to face terrible punishments. When members of the excavation team and others connected with the find started dying in strange or mysterious ways, the curse of the pharaoh became famous all around the world. The most famous of these deaths was that of Lord Carnarvon, who funded the trip and died soon after the tomb was opened from a bite from an infected mosquito. People were both scared and interested when newspapers and stories quickly linked his death and other deaths to the curse. Many of the claims have been shown to be false and can be explained by natural events or random events, but the tale lives on. The curse, whether it was real or made up, made King Tut's finding even more mysterious by combining old beliefs with modern mystery. He was buried with his two stillborn daughters. One of the saddest things found in King Tutankhamun's tomb was two small coffins with the preserved bodies of babies who had not yet been born. Through genetic tests and further study, it has been determined that these babies are the daughters of King Tut. Seeing these little mummies next to their father in the place where he will never die shows a very personal and sad part of the young pharaoh's life. Their burial next to King Tut shows how important family was in the royal bloodline and how important it was to ancient Egyptians to believe in rebirth and reunion in the afterlife. The exact reasons why they died so young are still unknown, but some people think that genetic problems may have been a factor, possibly because the royal family married people from other families. Finding out about King Tut's children gives the story of pharaohs and their reigns a more human touch. It's a sad warning that life is fragile, even for people who are thought to be gods, and that love, loss, and grief are feelings that everyone has, regardless of time or culture. His beard was broken. His golden funeral mask is the most famous of the many treasures found in King Tutankhamun's tomb. It is a reminder of how grand Egypt was in the past. But in a strange modern accident, the blue and gold knotted beard on the mask was broken off while it was being cleaned at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. The event happened in 2014 and caused a hasty and bad decision to use epoxy glue to try to reconnect the beard, which damaged this valuable item even more. The bad repair caused a worldwide uproar and showed how hard it is to keep old artifacts safe in modern times. Luckily, a team of German and Egyptian repair experts later carefully fixed the mask, reattaching the beard and making sure it will stay in good shape for future generations. There is a fine line between preserving history and dealing with it, as shown by the story of the broken beard. There may be hidden chambers in his tomb. King Tutankhamun's tomb was found in 1922, which was a big deal in the history of archaeology. But the tomb's secrets did not end when it was first opened. 
In the past few years, high-tech investigations and advanced radar scans have raised the chance of hidden rooms inside the tomb's walls. If these rooms exist, they might hold clues to more treasures or even the tombs of other royal people, like the elusive Queen Nefertiti. The rumors have sparked new interest and discussion around the world among Egyptologists and fans. Others are hopeful that these rooms will help them learn more about the 18th dynasty, while others think they might just be strange architectural features or empty spaces. How useful hidden rooms could be shows how mysterious ancient Egypt still is, and how much more we can learn about it below the sands. His tomb had the only surviving Egyptian trumpets. One of the many treasures found in King Tutankhamun's tomb actually echoes with the sounds of ancient Egypt, a rare trumpet which is one of the oldest musical instruments that can still be played. This trumpet, which is made of silver and gold, has been praised for both its stunning handiwork and the hauntingly beautiful sound it makes. People said that its sad tones stirred their souls and connected them to a society that lived a long time ago when they heard it on the radio in the 20th century. But there are also stories about the trumpet's magical powers. For example, some say that its sound can bring about war and chaos. In fact, its airing in 1939, just a few months before World War II started, adds to the instrument's legend. This recording is one of a kind because it lets us hear and feel a part of the world that King Tut once lived in. The real reason his tomb had been hidden. A huge cemetery on the west bank of the Nile called the Valley of the Kings is where many of Egypt's most famous pharaohs are buried. However, the fact that King Tutankhamun's tomb is in this valley is very interesting. The grave of King Tut was tucked away in a remote corner, right under the door to Ramses VI's tomb. For thousands of years, no one went there or noticed it. The tomb's unusual setting and small size probably helped keep it safe until Howard Carter found it in 1922. Some scholars think that the tomb's hidden location was chosen on purpose, maybe because the young king died suddenly and everyone rushed to find a good place to bury him. Others think it was a safety step meant to keep the tomb from being harmed. No matter what the reason was, the tomb's position became its best defense against time and people who wanted to get in. He had an object from outer space. A dagger made from meteoritic iron is one of the most interesting things in King Tutankhamun's tomb. It is important on Earth, but it also has a link to space. This very well-made weapon with a shiny metal blade and a gold handle with lots of small details is thought to have been made from a rock that hit Earth. Nickel and cobalt, which are often found in meteors, were found in the blade after it was analyzed by scientists today. The use of such a rare and celestial metal emphasizes the symbolic value of the dagger, connecting the pharaoh to God and the skies. Meteorites were seen as presents from the gods in ancient Egypt, the iron they contained, which was often called iron from the sky, was more valuable than gold. The meteorite dagger not only shows how skilled ancient Egyptian metal workers were, but it also shows how deeply spiritual and cosmologically important they thought things from space were to them. When this young pharaoh held it, it was both a weapon to protect him and a sign of his heavenly right to rule, connecting the worlds of Earth and the universe. We hope you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're a history addict, and please let us know about what civilization or time period we should talk about. Also, watch another video here.